So good afternoon and welcome to the 2024 budget proposal overview and policy discussion. I'm going to turn this over to our wonderful director, Peter McDevitt, along with our wonderful deputy director, Rayer Price, and they will walk us through a high level of the budget. And then we'll turn over to members for discussion. Currently, we have Councilman Wilson and Councilwoman Gross with us. Other members may be watching in their offices, and this does formally kick off our budget hearing process. Directors? Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Pete McDevitt. I am your City Council Budget Director. I'm joined here today with Deputy Director Rhea Price, um, and we have a little presentation to go over to review the budgets that Mayor Ganey presented yesterday. Uh, I wanted to start by thanking some people. First, um, the mayor and his administration and OMB. Me and Rhea both worked on that side of the hall, and we know the incredible amount of work that goes into creating both of these budgets, uh, and we're really appreciative of everybody over there and all the work they put into it. Um, next, I wanted to thank council again for giving us the opportunity and putting your faith in us to shepherd you through this process through the end of the year to make sure that we have good budgets for the city. Um, and lastly, I wanted to thank the city clerk's office. In particular, Paula Ireland did a lot of help setting up the uh, budget briefings that we had last month leading up to this, and Ashley Robinson for setting up all of the budget hearings that we'll be having through the rest of the year. I think we're on our fifth version of that schedule and we might need to make another one and Ashley is very helpful in all of that so they have my sincere thanks and gratitude to that entire office. Um, without them, we wouldn't be able to do anything that we're able to do up here. So thank you very much to them. So kicking us off, um, here's our agenda today. I'll just go over it quickly. Um, we'll start with what I think will be a helpful way of how to interpret the city's budgets. Then we'll move on to the operating budget and we'll briefly touch on some of the trust funds that the city utilizes. Uh, then we'll jump to the capital budget and then we'll quickly touch on investments in affordable housing and the ARPA spending in 2024. And then we'll wrap things up by discussing the fund balance and what the city has, to, has facing us in the future. So with that, let's talk about how you can look at the budget. Um, when most people look at budgets, they think it's a lot of numbers, and it is, um, but it's also more than that. Uh, the operating capital budgets are the chief policy documents of the city. They present a plan of action on how we intend to spend the taxpayers' dollars uh, into city operations. But I like to think that the city um, tells a story with its budget. It tells a story about the people that we serve. It tells a story about the services that we offer. It talks about the places that we visit and how we get there. The budget also tells a story of those of us who serve the public and the people who keep us safe and the equipment that they use to do their jobs. And it might not be as obvious, but if you look closely, the budget can also show where we're coming up short. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Rhea so she can tell you a little bit about the operating budget. <clears throat> now we'll do an overview of the operating budget, focusing on 2024 revenues and expenditures. The operating budget is approximately $685 million. The U.S. Census for 2022 estimates that there are 137,747 households within the city of Pittsburgh. So another way to look at the operating budget is that the city will spend approximately $414 per month per household to pay for public safety services, trash pickup and recycling, parks and recreation, and much more. On this slide, you see the five-year forecast. The operating budget must meet three legal requirements. Here, we see that the budget meets the balanced budget mandate. The city's home rule charter requires that the annual operating budget be balanced with estimated revenues equal to or greater than the estimated expenditures. Here, you'll see the fund balance as a percentage of expenditures. 
Chapter 21902 states, the projected fund balance shall be minimally maintained at 10% through each year of the five-year plan. And finally, you see that the budget meets its debt limit ceiling. The Code of Ordinances has a goal of limiting tax-supported debt service to 12% of expenditures. Now let's move on to revenues, focusing on 2024 budgeted revenues. The projected revenues for 2024 are a little over $714 million. Now these revenue projections have been reviewed by finance, OMB, council budget, and the controller. The controller has certified these revenue projections. Now this slide shows a more visual makeup of the city's general fund revenues. The larger pie shows the makeup by category with taxes making up about $542 million of the city's revenues, or 76%. The smaller pie shows the composition of tax revenues by percentage. And finally, the table on the upper right of the slide shows our top six revenues, with the real estate tax making up 21% of the total. Next comes earned income tax, followed by payroll prep, deed transfer, parking tax, and then ARPA. Now, just a few final notes regarding revenues. This is the last year the city will be using American Rescue Plan Act revenue to balance the budget for 2024. Interest earnings are much higher than in recent years due to a 22-year high set by the Fed. Now, deed transfer tax is down likely due to those high interest rates. The zoning fee schedule was revised to be more equitable. Um, although, it, although it continues to rebound, the parking tax is still below what it was pre-pandemic. And finally, in his letter to certify the 2024 revenue forecast, Controller Lamb cited lingering concerns about what Allegheny County decides to do with assessments. Now let's move on to expenditures, which total $685 million in 2024. Here we see the five-year expenditures by department. Now, there were no major organizational changes in this year's budget, but additional positions were added to fire, PLI, city planning, environmental services, and a few other departments. And although 50 less rank and file officers were budgeted for 2024, 12 civilian positions were added to police. And additional funding was also added to the following in 2024. $2.6 million for police vehicles and public safety admin, an additional $4 million in city planning for the comprehensive plan, a $6 million um, additional amount for settlements and legal fees and law, an additional $4 million in DBW facilities for various facilities renovations, and about 900,000 in Domi for bridge maintenance. Now, this slide shows the 2024 expenditures by category visually, with personnel-related expenditures making up nearly three quarters of the operating budget, or $503 million. Debt service is the next biggest category with 10%, and all the other categories make up the remaining 16% of the operating budget. Now, moving on to pensions. Budgeted under the employee benefits category, pension contributions make up 17% of the operating budget, or nearly $112 million. This chart shows the makeup of our pension contributions, including our MMO, which means our minimum municipal obligations, the $26.8 million from the parking tax, and additional contributions totaling $26 million. Now we'll move on to debt, which makes up, as I said before, 10% of the operating budget. The first chart shows our budgeted principal and interest payments until 2028. Here you can see a large drop-off of over $31 million from 2026 to 27, 
as we pay off several bond issuances. The second chart shows the total current and anticipated debt service of over $1 billion. As you can see, we'll be paying on that debt until 2048. Moving on to the workforce, since as we mentioned, employee salaries and benefits make up three quarters of our operating budget. The total number of full-time employees in the 2024 operating budget is 3,593 positions. Those include general funded positions, trust fund positions, and grant funded positions. A net total of 11 positions were added to the budget. Now, as you can see on this slide, uh, a number of positions were added to several departments, but those were mostly offset by the reduction of 50 less police officers. Um, this slide just gives a little bit more information regarding our budgeted workforce. Uh, public safety employees make up over half of our budget. And uh, these include, in the 2024 budget, 849 police officers, 678 firefighters, 211 paramedics, 16 animal controllers, and 77 school crossing guards. Uh, public Works and Domi make up another 22% of the workforce. And we just wanted to point out that the 2020-2024 operating budget includes 3% salary increases for most of the workforce per their respective collective bargaining agreements. Uh, one thing we do want to point out is uh, since they are still in contract negotiations, the firefighters, paramedics, and PJCBC employees currently show 0% raises in the budget since they are in the, those negotiations. Uh, again, since public safety is very important, we wanted to include a slide on changes in this year's budget for the Bureau of Police. The 2024 operating budget includes 909 employees. Of that, 849 are uniformed employees. This means that there are 50 fewer rank and file officers in 2024. However, as I mentioned before, 12 civilian community service aides have been added. The table at the bottom shows the budgeted number of officers per year, as well as the number of anticipated rec recruit classes for each year. And now I'll turn it back over to the director. Okay, let's talk about trust funds. Um, we'll start with uh, one of the bigger ones, the Parks Trust Fund. Uh, as you all know, we get this funding for a parks tax at half a mil um, of property taxes and that money must be used within city parks. Uh, in 2024, there will be just over $10 million in the Parks Trust Fund. The mayor has proposed that we increase the staff paid from this trust fund from 40 full-time employees uh, for DPW and Parks and Rec to 54 total across those two departments. Um, and they'll also use uh, the trust fund to purchase additional DPW parks maintenance vehicles and invest in a number of capital upgrades within our parks, and you can see those listed there. Uh, moving on, here is uh, an outline um, of some of our other larger trust funds, focusing on the ones with positions that are funded from those special revenues. You might notice that there's the increase in the Parks and Rec Regional Asset District Trust Fund. Uh, with that, we'll be able to add five additional full-time employees. And with that, I'm gonna to shift to the capital budget. Uh, so you may remember the mayor mentioning yesterday that he's proposed uh, the capital budget will focus on existing, the existing backlog of capital projects. So uh, there's not gonna to be too many new um, initiatives in there. Uh, I didn't list it, but it's always good to point out how much money we have in paving. This year there's $17 million in paving which is actually a $1.2 million reduction from last year. Um, but there is an increase in traffic calming projects, uh, which is one of the highest requests that we get uh, from the public. Um, and there's also federal funding for, um, for the transportation improvement projects, the TIP money for the Charles Anderson Bridge. And there's continued rehabs of our fields, courts, rec and senior centers, and public safety facilities. There's also money for new equipment for the Fire Bureau and uh, there's a little bit less than $9.5 million to replace our aging fleet, 
which is really less than half of what we should be putting into that every year. Councilman Cogco, you know that as a member of the ELA board. Um, we're not in great shape with that. So um, when council sets the budget, uh, you're not just voting on next year's projects, but it's, it's a long-term plan. Um, so I'm gonna ask you to indulge me for a quick little story. Uh, earlier this year, listening to the radio, uh, the George Harrison song, I Got My Mind Set On You came on. Um, and a lot of people like me think it's about trying to win over someone that you love. Um, but listening to the, to the refrain, I came to the realization that's not what it's about. Cause he says, it's gonna take time. It's gonna take money, a whole lot of spending money. It's gonna take plenty of money. And it's gonna take time, a whole lot of precious time. It's gonna take patience and time to do it right. George Harrison was talking about setting up a municipal capital improvement plan. That's what I think the song's about. Um, but the, these, the capital projects, they often take a long period of time to finish. There's gonna be projects in this year's capital budget that will require funding in future year budgets. So you just wanna be aware of that whenever you're looking over all the capital projects. Um, that's why we have a backlog that we're trying to focus on because they too take a lot of time. Um, and then, thank you for letting me get that out of my system. Uh, <laughs> so we're gonna look at the, the funding sources here um, that make up the capital budget. Just to give a quick reminder to all of you um, what these funding sources are. Uh, after the capital budget is set, then we will go and issue a bond. Uh, and that's gonna be a separate process from the, cap from the, the budgeting process. Council will have to approve a separate um, legislation at the beginning of next year so we don't have that money in hand. We don't actually get that till late April, early, or early April, late March. Um, but that's what that is. Uh, PAYGO funding is just transferred from the general fund. The community development block grants, um, those have to be set, spent in accordance with HUD guidelines. And other funds are made up of outside funding sources, most notably those transportation improvement projects. Um, the, the TIP grants come from federal and state governments, and those really help for a lot of our bridge and infrastructure projects. So circling back to CDBG funding, this is a slide that you see every year, uh, and I think it's important to keep showing it. You can see on the graph with the blue line that we used to receive a lot more funding, CDBG funding from the federal government to help fill the gaps in our budget. Uh, as you can see, in the graph with the orange line, that's uh, the CDBG dollars. We were, that shows that the CDBG dollars today are not only less, but they um, are less valuable because of the inflation over that time. So on top of the restrictions on how to use those specific dollars, uh, it's a lot tighter than usual. The CDBG used to make up about a third of our capital budget. Now it makes up less than 10% of it. So. Um, that's just less funding that we get, less help from the federal government that we get. So this is a look at capital budgets by functional area. Um, more than half of what we're spending in the capital budget will go to engineering con and construction. Almost a quarter of it will be going into facilities improvements. Uh, and if you, if you look at it, these can be broken down further. The functional area will drill down into different project levels, and each of the projects will go into deliverables. So here's a look at that. Uh, these are the facility improvements rec and senior center projects that fall within the functional area of facility improvements. And then here you can see the separate deliverables that make up those uh, facility improvement rec and senior center projects. And here is a look at how the 2023 capital projects, as they're spread throughout the city, you'll see almost a quarter of the capital budget is being spent in District 3. And that's due to the $25 million um, going into the Charles Anderson Bridge project. So if we would look at it taking out all the TIP projects, this is what it would look at, like. Um, it's a little bit more equitable over spread. Uh, when you look at it that way. So now, um, moving on from the capital budget, I wanted to briefly touch on how the 2024 budget uh, is addressing affordable housing. In the capital budget, there are CDBG dollars going towards the three programs listed there. 
Uh, and there are also transfers straight out of the general fund with 10 million going to the housing opportunity fund and $2.5 million going towards the housing assistant bond that the URA will be taking out. Next, we're gonna take a look at ARPA um, in the 2024 budget. The mayor did not propose any changes to the ARPA plan. So in 2024, there will be about $46 million to supplement the operating budget, and there's about $3 million in capital projects. Uh, and just to stick on ARPA for a little bit, we, we've talked about it before, but it's worth mentioning again, all of our ARPA dollars need to be under contract by the end of next year, or else the federal government's gonna take them back. Um, while there's no proposed changes now to the ARPA plan, um, in the not too distant future, we're gonna have to take a look, take a hard look at that um, and see what line items are still not under contract and consider reallocating them to, to something that we know we can spend the money on. Um, we're not going to get another bailout like this. So you really have to ask yourself that if you had one chance or opportunity to get everything you ever wanted, would you take it or would you let it slip away? And we can't afford to, to let that slip away. You're not song. No, not this time, no. I thought it was too. But I'll save my questions. <laughs> We're almost through here. Um, so moving on to the fund balance, but segueing with ARPA, uh, this graph shows the dollar amount of the ending reserve fund balance over the past seven years. You can see that starting in 2021, we were able to supplement the fund balance with ARPA dollars, uh, which is the blue portion on those bars. Um, by the end of the year, by the end of, um, by the end of this year, 2023, more than 80% of the fund balance um, is gonna be propped up by ARPA dollars. Uh, so that just goes to show that without the bailout, we might not have a fund balance at all. Um, and this slide might be a little confusing. Uh, so let me break it down for you. Um, we talked about the fund balance in terms of dollars, but we also talk about it in terms of percentage. Uh, this chart shows both of them together. The blue lines are the dollar values and the blue bars are the dollar values and the yellow line is the percentage. Um, you can see both of those figures going down over the next five years, bottom amount at 10% in 2028, which is the minimum that we're allowed by code. Uh, 10% is the, is the least we're allowed, but 10% is not healthy. Uh, me and Rhea referenced the Government Finance Officers Association a lot. Um, that's because they're the group that sets the standards for government budgeting. And uh, their, their best practice is 16.7% of your remaining funds um, should be in your fund balance. So that's equal to two months. So if we ran out of money suddenly, we still have two months to keep ourselves afloat for all of our operations uh, while we figured out what the next steps were. Speaking of that, um, next steps moving forwards. Uh, I'm gonna wrap up here, um, but I wanted to talk about what we have to keep in mind as we move forward. Uh, first, we're gonna have to start about thinking about life after ARPA. Uh, we won't have any cushion in our operating budget after 2024. Uh, and we need to make sure that we have everything under contract by the next year, by the end of next year, because um, we're, we're not in a financial position to give money back. Uh, next, we need to make sure that we're maintaining a healthy and balanced budget. Over the next month, we're gonna hear from the departments across the city, and they're gonna tell us all the great things that they did last year, and all the great things that they have planned for next year. But a common theme is also gonna be that they need more resources. Uh, everyone is working under capacity. Um, we're not even budgeting for the full amount of police officers that we need. And there's a reason that we have a backlog of capital projects. We just do not have the number of project managers that we need to do all of the projects that our capital budget, which isn't enough, but we can't even keep up with what is in there. Um, and lastly, that brings me to my final point uh, we need to find a way to bring in more revenue. Hopefully, the next Allegheny County executive, uh, fellow North Hills High School alumni, 
Sarah and Murado. Um, she'll do, hopefully she will consider doing a real estate reassessment um, and that will buy us some breathing room, but it's gonna take more than that. We need some kind of pilot payments from our local nonprofits. We need help from the county's Department of Human Services who that department alone's budget is larger than the city's. Uh, if they can chip in for our OCHS team, that would go a long way, I think. Um, and I know that nobody wants to hear this, but over the next few years, we're gonna have to take a hard look at raising taxes um, for, for, to get more revenue in. If you look at it, Duquesne Light got permission from the PUC to raise their rates uh, a year or two ago. PWSA is also asking the PUC to allow them to raise rates. Uh, the parking authority raised rates over the summer. Inflation has hit us hard over the last couple of years and things cost more than they used to. So we need to find a way to pay for those and increasing our rates is, is something that we really have to consider. Um, run is, running a city is expensive uh, and we need to make sure that we have enough money to pay for that. And that's where I'm gonna leave you today. Uh, thank you again for allowing us the opportunity to go over the budget. Uh, I hope you're all excited about the next month as I am. Um, we'll see you uh, tomorrow, we'll start with OMB. Um, and with that, if you have any questions, let us know. Can you go back one slide, Peter? Yes. <clears throat> Just because um, after your presentation, you mentioned it, but I don't know how colleagues feel about this, um, but I do believe we should collectively probably send a will of counsel to our new county executive elect. I'm not sure if members support reassessment, but it, my personal opinion, we should do it every two years, every two to three years, that's my personal opinion. But a reassessment would help us out, maybe bring in five, six million additional dollars to help the city out. So I think if members are on board with such a thing, I think we should send a collective will of counsel supporting that move. And then another thing I just wanna point out, when they spoke about the fund balance, um, every year we all collectively do this is we all say well I want to send three positions mm -hmm. to Domi or I want a specialized person in planning or I want this this and this if we do that then we also have to look at who we're going to cut because if we just start add positions those are carrying costs for every year our balance our we will not be balanced and we'll be under the 10 percent so if we're going to consider adding additional positions, we also have to consider where we're going to cut from and where we're going to take away from. With that, I'll turn it over to members. Councilman Cock, I know you wanted to chime in. Okay, now I'll start. Uh, just, I just have a couple questions. Um, you know, we talk about ARPA money and everything has to be under contract by 2024. And I think these figures were given to us not too long ago, but how much of that money is not allocated at this point? Well, I should have had right. that ready for this meeting. I, I, okay. I, well, I'm, Patrick Cornell does a good job putting out the quarterly reports a lot because we're legally required to. Um, but uh, that, that money, we, we can find that out, answer out for you pretty easily. Okay. And, and give me some examples yeah, if, like. if for some reason it's not under contract. It, it just has to be under contract. It doesn't have to be spent, correct? It, it has correct. to be spent. Yeah, we have two more years after we get under contract that it has to be spent. So it has to be spent by the end of 2026. Right. And other than vehicles, which that's what I would prefer, that's where we really need to put any money that's not allocated or under contract at that time. Give me some other examples where we can spend that money quickly. Paving. Paving. Uh, demo. Yeah, demo. paving and demo. Um, those are two things that we always underfund. Last year, council did a great job of not touching that money um, in paving, um, and that was great. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Um, it still was not enough, according to Domi, and I would agree with them. But and we always need m more money for for emergency demos. Yeah, paving vehicles. What was the third? Uh, demo. 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 All good things. All things I, I really think we need to invest in. So, but we don't have any idea as to how much is actually under contract. Not we even I, if it's I, not under contract. I do have that information. Okay. I'll give that to you Got directly it. after this meeting. Good, good deal, good deal. And you had mentioned, Peter, um, we're gonna need to get pilots from our profits. We've been we've been trying it for years. That's not gonna happen. I, you I know mean, that's not gonna happen. It just I, won't. I think we need to put ourselves in the position that we understand that 
we can't let having the perfect deal stop us from having something that helps us. I, I, I agree 100 percent. But until we're from out from under litigation, that's not going to happen. What when was the last time we had a pilot program and how much money did it bring in? Do you remember? Did you have any facts on that? For my time. It wasn't that much. It was only honestly only a few million dollars from all? what I recall. Yeah. Well, the last time that we bu like start we're budgeting it. Well, I would think it would be a lot more than a few million dollars if we if we were in negotiations with them. Um, certainly, if we are reassessed, which I believe we are headed for uh, under a new county executive, um, just in parks tax alone, you know, I know we can't estimate because you know, depending on what new properties are assessed at, so that parks tax fund will go from 10 million possibly to 20 million. And even more, maybe. There, there is like anti-windfall stipulation, so I think we're capped at like a 5% increase on real estate taxes. Mm -hmm. But that again, that's, I mean, we have one, 150 million in, in real estate taxes, so that's $6 million right there. Which like, that's not a lot, but it's not nothing. Right, right. Okay, uh, that's it. I, I, I would just really like to see the breakdown as to what's under contract. Yeah, we can get that know, for Adam. Yeah, for, I put for that for together for Council President like two weeks ago, so yeah, I'll send that to you. I'll also say, and I know that Councilwoman Gross is something that you've been a champion of, that the, the administration has been um, going and, and fighting the, the tax-exempt properties to, to make sure that those are all on the up and up and they're paying their fair share. And that's something I, I'm in full agreement with Councilwoman Gross. We should be doing that regularly. We shouldn't have waited yeah. five, well, six, seven years. Well, on that, doing on that. that note, the, the 26 or so, I think that we have identified as not being nonprofit, have we started receiving payment already? No. Did they, did they, I don't did, think so. I don't and, think and, and does that just go moving forward or is that, do we go back? I don't know if it'll be Correct. retroactive. That's a really great question. Okay. I, don't I think they're down to 13 now, not 26. Oh, yeah. So we don't, we wouldn't have that, you wouldn't have that figure. I, I, I don't have that okay. fine answer to the law department. I, I might be able to answer that. that. Okay. Um, that's it for now. I, I, I'll chime back in once others. Thank you, Councilman Gross. Did you have anything? Councilman Warwick. <laughs> Councilman Wilson. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So, thanks for going over everything. Yeah. Well, not everything, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's high level. It's pretty, uh, high, yeah. So, where would the the funds be uh, kept in preparation for the the union negotiations? That um, there's a pot of money that is set aside in human resources budget. So the, it's in there, it's just not allocated yet. Um, I understand the OMB and the administration's hesitancy to reflecting at because they don't have a number to reflect yet, so they wouldn't want to be disingenuous and make it too high or too low. Um, but the money's there, and should council decide if to reflect it in some yeah. way, we can do that. If what? If what? council decides that you want it reflected in the budget, then mm. we can make those amendments to make sure that it shows up there. So he's saying to actually show the salary increases for yeah. well, we won't like know an it. estimated salary yeah, increase that, for those yeah, positions. We don't, yeah, we won't know it until they, yeah, they have those know. CBAs. So if we go back to the police negotiate, negotiations, that was, was that done the same way? Show zero percent? No, they, they showed a, a percentage increase, but then we had to amend the budget once the contract was it was higher. Yeah. Yes. And where was that money pulled from? So we actually also changed the updated the revenues. Um, it, so a lot of it came from there, and then yeah. Was there anyone else that we paid for? Okay. Mm -hmm. My point is, if we had to do that again, where would it? Where it would come would, from where, that where HR pot. They, it's I mean, so big. <laughs> it, it's yeah. Hopefully, it's big enough. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Um, and then, in terms of uh, services that we provide, there's a five year. Um, that's in the five year too. So, for instance, paving. So, what's the? Are you showing? I know this is high level, but are you showing what paving is? Uh, like in 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 twenty twenty four, it'll yeah. be yeah. You can see in the capital budget. Um, 
Oh, it does go down. Yeah. From 2024. I, yeah. I can't remember the exact figures. Oh, it's right there. Um, yeah, so 17 million in 2024 and 5.5 .5 million in 2025. 6 million in 26 and 16.3 million in 27. One thing that we didn't really talk about too much is that dead cliff that we hit in 2027. Mm -hmm. So um, once we hit that, there's a lot more funding that will become available because it's less funding money that we have to pay towards our debt service. Mm -hmm. uh, so that might be why it's, it's, it's pretty lean until 2027. But then also keep in mind, 2027, we have a 12% fund balance after we hit that debt cliff. And then the year after that, it's 10%. So like we are cutting it close. Mm -hmm. But just to, you know, dive into this one, this, the, the paving kind of shows that in those two years that serve like, well, not services, but you know, that's in the spending for paving. Yeah. Yeah. So not trash pickup services those type of services, but you know, to maintain our roads and everything that goes down for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, the need to increase revenue is like right in front of us. Yeah. Since it's, wait, so that's in what year it goes down to 5 million next year, next year, 20 or 2025. Sorry. Um, the year after 2025. Yeah, so 2025, in two years, yeah, in two years. Yeah. Well, that is, yeah, this is 2024 budget, 2025. Yeah, I mean, so this is 25, last year. 25 and 26. Yeah. Goes down. Um, yeah, those two years combined is less than what we'll be paying in 2024. Mm -hmm. And these are all projections. This is, you know, it's a long-term plan. Things, things are going to change between now and then. Um, but I, I think you're hitting the right point that we, we need more revenue so that we can make sure that we're, like, that's that's the bread and butter of local government is making sure that we're plowing our streets and, and paving them in the summer. Um, so to see that dip in that kind of investment is concerning. Yeah, I also saw decreases in the URA as well in the same years. So you don't have to look it up, but I'm just... I mean, that could be the case. A lot of what they get is between PAYGO and CDBG funding, yeah. and we're just we're going to be real tight on PAYGO just because that comes out of the operating budget, and the operating budget is going to be very tight over the next couple of years. So, uh, yeah, and then it's three percent this year, but it does go down to one percent. Well, it's three percent for employee. Um. So the salary increase was that changed? So for um for all employees, they follow their collective bargaining agreements. No, for not the the non-union. Non-union employees. Right now, you're showing. Oh, um, non-union employees. Right, right now, you're showing. They're they're put in 3%, for three percent. But in future years. Um, one percent in twenty-five and twenty-six, and yeah. then it goes back up to three percent in twenty-seven and twenty-eight. Yeah, I think we need to take a hard look to correct this. Yeah. So, that's all I'll say. Thank you, Madam President. Did you have anything? Yeah, I just want to thank you for your leadership yeah. on this. If not, motion to adjourn. So move. Second. We start recessing tomorrow. Okay, Once we actually start the hearings. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned.